Nearly two decades in the sports broadcast game and what a ride it's been. Interviews with the 42nd president, Bill Clinton, to Lakers legends Kobe Bryant and the NBA's all-time leading scorer, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, to name a few. I've been blessed to cover and tell some amazing stories, but there were so many more I didn't get to tell. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Untold Truths with Telly. My guest, you've seen and heard him throughout the NBA playoffs on TNT as one of the lead play-by-play -play voices. He's also been the voice of the Milwaukee Brewers since 2007. And he's none other than B.A. Brian Anderson joining us from the NBA bubble in Orlando. B.A., thanks for joining the show, man. I appreciate it. Oh, Telly, it's always good to be with you and see you again, my friend. Anything you need, I'm always happy to do anything you have going on. I like your show. You got a lot of good guests going on. It's been fun to watch. No, thank you very much. And, I mean, you've done so many other things. I had to condense your intro just to that. <laughs> and we'll get to the other things that you do a little later. But, B.A., let's get right to it. If I'm not mistaken, you're the only person in the country that has called Major League Baseball and NBA games during this pandemic. And I have to ask, what's been the biggest challenge in doing both so far? Yeah, I mean, it's uh, it's been a really interesting experience for me. Uh, the NBA is obviously – in a bubble so the existence in Orlando in the bubble is a really um, I wouldn't say it's hard it's just different so it's it's pretty much uh, like summer camp you know you we we have a golf course that's connected to the hotel and basically we can't leave the premises so uh, we play golf on our off days and we call basketball games on our work days and we just sit and prep and uh, the hotel's beautiful uh, we eat outside, so we order meals from either like a poolside bar, uh, restaurant type deal where we just pick up bags of food. They, basically, it's curbside, um, and we just find outdoor spaces to eat it or eat in your room. So that part of it's been interesting. You know, the, the basketball situation is a bubble. The baseball situation is not, and we were calling games from Miller Park, uh, the home of the Brewers, either road or home games, and so... The home games are really no different at all than what we used to experience when we worked together, minus no fans in the stands. The road games were interesting because you take it all off a monitor and um, you're, you're at Miller Park, but the team's in another ballpark. So uh, I, I, I recognized right away that looking out at the empty spaces of Miller Park got me kind of depressed about being in a pandemic, no fans, what we're trying to pull off. So I literally closed those windows to the booth and tried to just focus on the monitors in front of me. Um, uh, I, I think being at the venue calling the sporting events live is the best way to do it. It's the, it's the easiest way to do it. It's what we remember. But even in the NBA bubble telly, it's, it's odd. I mean, we're up. We're sitting up. So maybe, I don't know, 50 feet off the floor and up, say, two, you know, one story, two stories maybe. Um, and we're in an enclosed plexiglass area, each of us. So basically imagine each of us sitting in a Pope mobile and then just the way you communicate with your stats person, your analyst, it's all weird. We, we bang on the glass a lot, you know, knock, 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 like Chris Weber, if he has something to say, he, and he, wear, he has a wedding ring on his left hand. So every time he hits that glass, it's like, tick, tick, tick. so that's, <laughs> that's been an unusual experience. You feel disconnected from everything. Um, but it took me a few days to get used to it. Now, you know, I'm glad we're here live. We have no interaction with the players. Our reporters are doing all of that heavy lifting. They're, they're in the green zone. We're in the yellow zone. So we're kind of on the periphery. We can't go to the floor. Um, there's a separate entrance for us. We can't really talk to players. We do zoom calls with coaches. Uh, but you know, that piece of the pie for a play by play announcer, that one slice that you would get a lot of information from before a game, standing on the court, talking to players, um, down at the batting cage in baseball, that piece of the pie is missing. So I don't have any anecdotal news stories other than what the coaches are willing to share. And now that we've started the playoffs, you know, they're getting a little grumpy too. So there's not, there's not a whole lot of sharing of information going on. <laughs> yes, and as a trained broadcaster, the goal is to make fans want to be there or bring the fans to – 
the atmosphere that you're in and not having an atmosphere, I know that has to be extremely tough to generate your own kind of juice like the players do. But which sport do you think has suffered the most without the fans, basketball or baseball? Yeah, th oh, I think baseball for sure. I mean, the NBA, uh, the NBA story is pretty good. I mean, I think on television, when you watch games on television, they just kind of nailed it. You know, their, um, their package is great. They, they, they put a lot of money into building the stadiums, the arenas with the LED boards, the backgrounds, the virtual fans. The sight lines don't give you the empty space that are actually in these arenas. It actually feels like walking into a movie set. And behind those LED boards and those curtains is nothing is just wide open empty arena but you never see that at home so that's the probably the biggest shock when you walk into the NBA arena there are three arenas in play now there's two and there'll ultimately be one and so that experience when you first get in and you're making calls and let's say you give a, a big call you know Donovan Mitchell 50 points it kind of just is eerie because it feels like basically me sitting in this little sound booth I'm in and talking to you like there's nobody there there's no crowd to bounce back uh, so I do think the NBA has figured it out to the level that they could only uh, pursue because baseball it just requires so much more space and you know there's they're basically playing games in empty stadiums you know the NBA is an empty arena but they've totally made this for TV and the TV experience is somewhat normal I mean I would defer to you on that you watch as many games as anybody but it's different being here than it is experiencing it on television at the same time you kind of know that the television experience is sort of normal for NBA fans um, they're using the NBA 2k audio the sounds the crowd noises they've done a great job they have a DJ our girl DJ Shauna who's a Milwaukee legend she's one of the four DJs that's here in the bubble oh wow she's yeah she's got the place popping every night so I mean yeah, it, it's it's great you know I think it's a really important um, piece to solve for the NBA that the presentation would look more normal um, NBA is they're at a different level and a different kind of game the Major League Baseball you know they're they're still trying to fight their way through what it looks like what it feels like what it sounds like so and I don't blame the Major League Baseball. I just think the nature of the game is so different. There's so many players, the vastness of the space. So I, I don't think Major League Baseball can get where the NBA has gotten with their, with their bubble. Now, B.A., take us back to August 26th, the day that the Milwaukee Bucks boycotted the NBA playoffs in protest of the Jacob Blay shooting in Kenosha, Wisconsin, because I'm assuming – it started as business as usual, and then you arrive, and then this happens. Yeah, I mean, that was a powerful day. I believe it's going to be one of those days that'll, that'll be talked about for a long, long time. I mean, it, it, it's not just a, an historical event in the sports world. It's an historical event in real life, you know, and I think um, the players – especially the Bucks. So, so you've probably heard that in the aftermath, there was a lot of animosity towards the Bucks for putting the rest of the league in that position. And I'm not talking about from the ownership perspective. I'm talking about from the other players on other teams. Mm -hmm. um, but the Bucks, because of the Kenosha shooting, was so close to home and because that was so impactful and because they felt like they had a real chance to get the Wisconsin, Wisconsin legislators back to work and I believe there were nine bills uh, that, that were on the table, and they felt like they could push that over, over the edge. So a real moment where that could affect real change, um, and they took it. And so I give them a lot of credit. And, you know, I know that Mike Budenholzer and Craig Council are really close. Uh, I've played golf with both of those guys at the same time. I, I actually introduced them because I've known Bud for 25 years, and Council's a great friend, too, and I, and I just think the players are connected with the Brewers and the Bucks uh, closely as well. And so I think the players basically had these conversations with the Brewers and then maybe Craig Council looking at this scenario thinking, 
you know, the unprecedented step that a baseball team would do this. It's one thing for the NBA, which is always, I think, you know, kind of on, on the leading edge of social justice initiatives, uh, especially the WNBA. I give them a lot of credit. Like they've, they've actually been probably the best league on, on any of, of these initiatives. And so the NBA has been in the forefront. Baseball's not. They've been usually last. And baseball, uh, starting with the Brewers, I think they, they made their stand just a few hours after that. And, and then a lot of teams followed. And it was just, a, it was an amazing thing to watch. It was an amazing part of history to be a part of. Um, I think it got a lot of people to understand, to listen, to realize the hurt and the pain that has gone on, especially like for me, two, two levels, me as a play-by-play -play announcer, having to organize thoughts. And, you know, I never dreamed I'd be going into social justice initiatives as a broadcaster, a sports play-by-play -play announcer, that wasn't in the job description, but it forced me to, and I wanted to, and I wanted to do it right. And then on the second track is just being a white man, not understanding to the level that I needed to, um, going through this whole situation here. Um, it, it forced me to listen and learn better and more and really appreciate what these players are doing. And so, I mean, it, it's changed me, I'll tell you that. Like, I felt like I was, you know, a pretty open thinker anyway, but it's changed me and my mind on a lot of things. It's, it's, it's helped me understand better. Uh, it's helped me be more empathetic. It's helped me listen better. And I think, you know, if you're asking the Milwaukee Bucks, well, what did it accomplish? And I'll tell you from my perspective, a 49-year-old white male Midwest living sports announcer, it had an effect on me. So if I'm the only one it affected, then that matters. And I'm not the only one it affected. So there was a great reason for that. And I think it's, I think I've heard so from so many people, you know, some of my family, my friends, and I grew up in Texas, you know, I just think it's had a profound impact on the way people and namely white folks are seeing this world and realizing like you, you can't be a rational person and not understand the racial injustice that's gone on in this country. And if you're not going to just sit back and let it happen, you know, that's unacceptable. You have to actually be an anti-racist. It's not one, it's not good enough to just be not racist anymore. And I think that's really what's had an impact on me and my family. Like we, we are active and we are starting to support really starting with the George, George Floyd, uh, Floyd killing. I think we are, doing more than we've ever done trying to you know the way we vote the way we think the way uh, who we're uh, donating to who we're who we're holding up and trying to create real change so I don't I disagree with those that say well it didn't really accomplish anything totally disagree with that I think it's a bold brave step and I'm all in with these guys man I'm really proud of them that's awesome a couple of your Turner teammates took a hard stance and alliance with the protesting players with Kenny Smith walking off the set and Chris Webber giving an eloquent monologue of the situation. What is, was your reaction when you see your fellow coworkers who is obviously affected directly with everything that's going on to give their opinions and stances and the way that they went about it? Yeah, you know, Chris Weber is my partner uh, in the first round of playoffs. And, uh, you know, I've, I've worked with him through the years a lot, did the NCAA tournament with him. I mean, I have uh, done that with him the last four or five years. So I've, I've known him and worked with him for at least eight years. Um, I feel close to him, connected to him. And, you know, we were supposed to go to the arena. And um, I, think, I think Chris just made it clear that this, I want to handle this. And I thought it was beautiful. And I texted him immediately after. I said, you, you made me cry, man. I want to give you a hug. And I think that's really um, what he said, the way he said it. He spoke from the heart. He was eloquent. He, he didn't have a whole lot of time. He's also with Ernie Johnson and Stan Van Gundy at that particular moment. And Stan's incredibly gifted and, and really understands the law and understands politics. And so he was able to present that. Ernie is as great as he is. I was able to capture all that, but really Chris, Chris's voice needed to be heard. Um, he has been a superstar player. He is in the bubble now. So 
it's different than Kenny and Charles and Shaq and, you know, the, their voices matter a great deal, but really Chris's voice was the one that mattered in that moment because he's in the bubble with, with the rest of us. And he, he's understanding of the team aspect and all the facets of what it meant from the team aspect to the social aspect to what it means, just, you know, having the forward vision to think like, well, you could engage these owners and these owners need to probably engage back in a bigger way. And we're already starting to see that, you know, with, with NBA arenas uh, becoming voter uh, sites. Um, and so I think there's real tangible change. And Chris just, I mean, he hit a grand slam and, and, and it wasn't, he wasn't trying to hit a grand slam. He was just trying to have you on the other side of that camera, have whoever, not this mass audience of millions of people, but the individuals that make up this mass audience as best he could, um, he was trying to make a connection, and he did. And that's the beauty and the art of television, of public speaking, of message deliverance, however that's out there. And of course, it, it blew up on social media and all the secondary uh, sources that it aired on. So I was really proud of him. And, you know, tell, tell he, to his credit, we came back when they finally resumed play, and we had another moment where we were going to discuss – social justice initiatives as well. And he just kind of said, you know, I, I, I've been there, we've done it, Let, let's just call some ball. You know, we'll, we'll talk about it and we'll talk about the players and their, quote them in their context. But he had kind of like had it and he was, he's the leader on our crew. And once he's leading that way, then we, it kind of gave us license to also then get into the, the pick and roll defense, you know, and the, the basketball stuff. And I think right. um, his presence was invaluable here. And same for those other guys. I wasn't on the set with Kenny and Charles and Shaq, but I, I was with Chris Weber. And um, that was a moment that will live forever in the life and the celeb celebrity life of Chris Weber. That's awesome stuff. Now, I mean, you mentioned the bubble and Chris being there and, and having more – I guess, of a connection with the players and, and really living and feeling what they are going through. And just the bubble in general, it's been an overwhelming success. Uh, mm -hmm. Pretty much zero positive coronavirus tests uh, since the formation of this bubble. When they started discussing this as a possibility, did you foresee it going this well? No, no, I was really <laughs> skeptical. And, and you know, you've been around NBA players, man. <laughs> I was too, uh, to the, be the, honest. The, the fact that you're not going <laughs> to let anybody in here, you know, family, <laughs> wives, girlfriends, friends, posse, yeah. whatever, like whoever's right. in, in your group. And that slice has been gone. Now, ultimately, they allowed families in. And I think that's made a huge impact on these players that as they've advanced in the playoffs to the second round families are starting to uh, be allowed in. And I think that's awesome. Um, but I, I didn't see it happening this way, but I'm, I'll tell you one thing, Telly, you walk around here, there's a security guard every 10 feet. I mean, wow. you can't leave campus. They know where you are at all times. And just to switch gears a little bit, we talked about this on a recent broadcast during an NBA playoff game, but the play has never been better. And I think these guys, I'm interested to see what the carryover is going to be because when you take away the ancillary life of being an NBA player, the, whether it be the golf life, you know, the, the bar life after, the friends in your room, whatever it is, the video game life, which is still active here. But when you take away all those distractions, tickets, having to drum up family tickets or friends tickets, having to always – in every city you go, you've been around NBA players. Like, those guys are pulled on, stretched on so many levels. Take all that away, you're playing in the same gym basically every day, same rim, same backgrounds. These guys are killing it. I mean, yeah. their, their, their shooting percentages have never been higher in NBA history. Points scored never been higher in NBA history. It has been an absolute clinic in marksmanship and of the best shooters in the world, best players in the world. There's no travel, so they're not feeling the air pressure of, a, of an airplane in the air. They're not, you know, getting that pressurized feeling with their, their body, their joints, their muscles. They're fresh, 
and they're playing their tails off and they're competing like crazy. It's been awesome. And I'm just, I'm looking at all these young guys with no crowd, no hostile environments. I think the officiating is better. I think, and the officials would agree with that. We've talked to a number that they're gathering every day, hanging out at the pool, talking to each other, watching tape together. Those officials never get to spend time together. So everything's better and they're performing better. And I think the players are realizing like, wow, when you take away a big chunk of that NBA life, you can actually play ball. And I honestly think players are really enjoying it. And I'll tell you, this is one anecdote. Uh, you probably won't hear this or haven't heard it, but there are a number of NBA players, I'll, I'll confirm, that have been eliminated from this that are now texting and calling their friends that are still in it saying, man, I wish we were still in the bubble. I actually, that wow. was the be one of the best times of my life. Again, wow. it's like summer camp. And for those guys, yeah. you're just playing ball every other day, basically. And that's all you're focused on. I know they miss their families. Now their families are here. That makes it a lot easier. But it's been an incredible experience uh, to watch this unfold. And I think it will have some residual effects down the road. Be on the lookout for part two. Make sure to subscribe to Telly Hughes Media and click notifications so you'll be notified on all upcoming episodes of Untold Truths with Telly.